name is Patrick Corner, and I am a director at the Dawn Rehab. Joining us today is our special guest, Ms. Leslie Lyle, an applied positive psychologist. Thank you for joining us today, Ms. Leslie. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure to be here and talk to you. So um, for today's interview, I just have a couple of questions, and I would like your um, professional opinion on them. So if you may, can I start first, the first question? Yeah, fine. Sure. So um, the first thing I would like to ask you is, has there been an increase in materialism because of social media? You know, let's say compared to um, 20 years ago, the society today, are we more prone to depression and stress? Well, I, th I think there's probably a rise in materialism and the internet makes that very easy because uh, before you had to go to the effort of going to the shop and yeah. waiting for it to open and now you can just press a button or it might even have your credit card details. So there's instant gratification, so that definitely makes, makes a difference. Uh, and I think another thing with social media is that there's a lot of comparison yeah. Um, people and uh, research shows that people that compare themselves to others on social media, particularly these people who appear to be having this perfect life, yeah. it lowers their self-esteem, and that that would definitely be part of the depressive. I mean, if it's an ad to you, I mean, it can also create more pressure. Maybe when you see all your friends say you know, travel all, all around the world, maybe you want to be as accomplished maybe in terms of financially, so you want to work harder, yes. so pe people may become even more workaholic nowadays. So yes. can, is that true? I, well, I, I think the thing of comparing yourself to people who appear to be so happy and mm -hmm. doing these things may give you the impression that if I was as successful as them, mm -hmm. then I would be happy. But actually the science and the research shows that it's happiness that is the precursor to success. Okay. So happy people tend to get promoted, meet their partner, have a happy life. So it's, it's really an illusion. And um, on the other hand, I use social media and I find it's, it's, it's very positive because I've chosen the people that I interact with. So I think that that may be, particularly for young, younger people, something that they could bear in mind. So do you think um, positive psychology can maybe help people distinguish between financial success and happiness? Yes, I, th I think sometimes it's, it's just having the information because mm -hmm. there's a lot of illusion and, if you, and particularly with advertising, marketing will tell you, you will not be happy until you buy this phone or this suit Absolutely. or this car. And uh, the way that the human mind works is that these things it, it drives the desire, but then when we get them, yeah, we're happy for a day or two, and then we need the next new phone, or something else comes out. I actually did my research, and it says that um, this type of happiness that you gain from wealth, um, fame, and power only lasts around six months, and then you kind of get used to it, and then you... Yeah. Is that true? Is that the well, and I would say six months was probably quite a long time, so mm -hmm. some of it, 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 it just goes straight away. So that sort of hedonic pleasure experience, yeah. uh, like eating ice cream, chocolate, it's, it's in the moment. It's not going to actually add to lasting happiness in your life. But on the other hand, we're not saying you should have no pleasure in life. Right. <laughs> but you, you, need, you need both types, really. To, to have a balanced life, you need this hedonic sort of instant pleasure of happiness, and then the eudaimonic happiness, which is happiness that comes from doing something with that gives you purpose and meaning. Now, I mean, um, you've been here for the Burnout Program. I right? have. So, um, do you think people would benefit from coming to the Dawn, maybe? Like, who would benefit from coming to the Dawn, and does it help to come to maybe this environment where it's peaceful and get away from your high-functioning lifestyle, mm -hmm. you, you think? Well, I would be hard-pressed to think of somebody who wouldn't benefit. Mm -hmm. and, and I've benefited greatly myself in ways that I hadn't realized until I came here. I think it's only when you come away from your busy, busy life mm -hmm. and have time to sit and reflect that you notice the tiny little things. Like for me, I think I realized that I often would skip meals when I'd be busy at work. Yeah. And being here, I've had three good, nourishing meals every day, and good sleep, and the peace and tranquility, and, and being out of the environment that causes stress and anxiety, and maybe depression, uh, coming away from it gives you that break, yeah. so you can reassess. 
Well, one thing related to um, stress, I think, is sleeping disorder, mm, which very much. I think coming to a place like this could help a lot, I think. Yes. Absolutely. But a related question I would like to ask you is, um, actually my second question is, what is the status of our treatment method in helping with depression? Like, is it a, has there been an improvement come in the past 30 years? Or are we still sticking to the same model of treatment? And are we far away from finding the effective solution, from your opinion? I, th I think we're getting closer. Mm -hmm. I think it, it does vary in different cultures, and it's been very interesting talking to people from different countries here. Um, in the UK, the status of mental illness that used to be quite taboo mm -hmm. is now being spoken about more and we're actually teaching people how to recognize mental illness in schools mm -hmm. so in that respect i think it's it's getting better but at the same time as, as we've discussed you know life's putting extra pressures on us yeah. so i think awareness and education and being able to come somewhere like the dorm, I mean, apart from being a treatment centre, I think it's you know a case of sometimes prevention yeah. is better than cure to give yourself that break. I mean, related to that, I guess it would be stick one because in Thailand, right? I mean, people don't want to identify themselves as um, having, let's say, they have depression. They don't want to reach out because it can be a sign of weakness, especially if you are. Um, the CEO of the company, you, know, you don't want to go to the doctor and say, hey, I need help, I have depression. Can, is that a way for us to help maybe raise that awareness? Quicker? It's not a shame yeah. to ask no. for help. Maybe just talking about it. Yeah. I mean, the, the statistics say that at least one in three people will have some sort of mental illness mm -hmm. during their life. I think if you speak to people, most people know what stress is. Yeah. And if you recover from stress, stress is going to be quite a good thing. It's chronic stress where you're not recovering. Mm -hmm. So perhaps the thing that we all can do as individuals is, is have these conversations with mm -hmm. our friends and family. And then maybe our governments can help by bringing it out into the open and having campaigns. So that when you have a mental illness, you're treated just the same as if you have a broken leg. I mean, if you had a broken leg, nobody would say to you, don't tell anybody, cover it up and just hobble and try and get away with it. You'd get treated, and, it would, and it's the same with men mental illness, that it shouldn't be covered up, not, because of, not just because there's nothing wrong with it, but it's treatable, yeah. it can be treated and cured. Now, if I remember correctly, you, um, your first take took your, your um, laughing yoga, was it? Yeah, well... In, in, in India. In India, yes. It's funny because I would say um, laughing yoga is part of the positive psychologist spectrum of treatment. Is that correct? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if positive psychology would own it or not. It's something okay. that I've done in addition to to studying positive psychology. Sure, because it's, to me that's a very intriguing because statistically, um, most of the treatment center in India actually, I mean, if you have depression, you go to um, doctors. They are those, India is actually known for over prescribing antidepressant in my yes, opinion. Yes. It's just so funny how different culture now they you know, they're coming with different treatment methods that yes. trying to help people in yeah. achieving more fulfilling life without relying on medication. Yes. I, th I think where there's an overlap with positive psychology is that positive emotions are what make us feel happy and cause us to be happy. They're, they're, so you get an upward spiral of positive emotions rather than the downward spiral yeah, of depression. So laughter, uh, amusement is, is a positive emotion. So laughter yoga, for instance, works because the body doesn't know the difference between laughing because you actually think something's funny and making the noise of laughter. Uh, it's not for everybody, but for those that is good, it really works, it's very, very effective. And of course, it doesn't cure depression, yeah. but it does give, give people a break from depression because you can't laugh and feel depressed at the same time if you're having spontaneous genuine laughter mm -hmm. which is usually the result of laughter exercises and if you can have a break for an hour laughing I think it gives hope to people that maybe that could become two hours or you know that it isn't inevitable that you're going to be stuck with depression forever. So relating to yoga um at the dawn here, for example, we put a lot, a lot of emphasis on mindfulness and meditation. And from your opinion, how important is it to 
for all treatment program to incorporate some sort of um, mindfulness and aspect into it? And why has it become so popular nowadays? Well, of course, it's been popular for thousands of years, but one of the reasons it's becoming more popular is because of the realization of how important it is. And the research now, we're able to wire people's brains up and, yeah. and look at what happens to when people meditate or they're mindful. And there's lots of different ways of, of doing all of these things. And the interesting thing is that in, in um, studies, when they've looked at people who've been meditating for many years and put in a study group of people that have never made, uh, meditated before, even a week will make a difference. Is that like, can you tell us a little bit more about the differences like in the brain? Like, uh, is it more neuron transmitter? Like, well, uh, mindfulness, for instance, yeah. it helps us to be actually noticing the good things in life and what we're doing. But, you know, the brain has a tendency just to be looking at future events or um, catastrophizing about something that might happen or something that has happened. Yeah, Mindfulness helps us to, to be present in the moment and to be still. So it, it, what, it, what both do, meditation and mindfulness, is it, it turns down that, the, the stress response. It puts us into the parasympathetic nervous system mm -hmm. where we process emotions and all the bodily functions. So it hires our uh, immune system, and it has a, a, a lasting effect on, on everything. It, it's so good for us. And we only have to do it for a few, you know, just a few minutes a day is enough. That's not to say that more isn't good as well. And I'm guessing mindfulness can be practiced by everyone, and it's good for everybody, not just those who are, I guess, suffer from burnout or depression. Yes, right? abs absolutely. And well, it's a great preventative because it's. For me, it's like when you turn, you know, sometimes your computer or your phone starts to act a bit weird, you yeah. know, and you turn it off, and then you turn it back on, and everything is restored, and it works normally. It's like and a reset then, button. Yeah, you know. exactly. And I think that's... And, and now you practice mindfulness at all? Yes, okay, cool. I do. Oh, right. And for some people, they find it very hard to sit and empty their mind. I'm probably one of those people. But mindfulness can be just paying attention to what you're doing in the moment. Mm -hmm rather than the multitasking that we do. So washing your hands can be mindful. You, you could make the decision that every time I wash my hands, I'm going to pay attention to the sound of the water, the feel of the water, the smell of the soap, etc. And it's just giving you that time to connect with yourself and be grounded. Yeah, I mean, that's something I should start doing, I guess. <laughs> that's my problem is um, when I drive, I tend to drive mindlessly. Uh, you know, but I've been trying. Yeah. Well, we do. You know, 99% of what we do is, is automatic behaviour, yeah. which is, I mean, it would be awful if you had to remember how to drive every time you were driving to work. <laughs> so it's okay to be um, automatic a lot of the time, but, but making the commitment to give yourself some time and come back and be mindful every now and again, daily would help. Yeah, well, well, so, so it's only to try it on. Now, it's generally accepted that when you have depression and stress, and if you left it untreated for too long, it can lead to a more serious physical health. Do you agree with that? I absolutely agree with that. Can because just, going back to the analogy of a broken neck, you know, yeah. treat it until it gets, it would just get worse, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. And I think um, depression and the negative thoughts that come with depression start to get deeper and bigger and it, it takes you into, you know, the more depressed you feel, the less likely you are to go out, to yeah. be mindful, to take exercise, to look after yourself. So yes, I, I would agree with that entirely. But then how do we, because it's, it seems to me that um, depression and stress, people can live with it and cope with it for years. Yes. You know, and then when they realize they need it, it's more or less too late, kind of. I so agree. Is there any advice for us? You know, like well, how do we know when yes. you know I should get help now, like professional help? Yeah. So, so I, I agree with it, and I'm talking to myself now. I think one of the ways of dealing with it is not taking your health mm -hmm. for granted, not considering your health just to be not having a cold, yeah. but to have a holistic approach, and to schedule time for yourself. So, I, I'm coming back 
regularly here. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, the amount of time I spend helping other people, looking after other people, the amount of money that I might spend on going on a holiday yeah. would be a far better investment in me. Mm -hmm. And coming somewhere like this, away from my normal everyday environment, away from work, um, I, I mean, there is internet and email, etc. Here, I don't feel inclined to look at it, which, which in itself is a change because I'm just very relaxed. <laughs> and, and having um, the support here as well, this is what's so important. I think some people, as you say, are so busy they don't even know they have a problem. Yeah. I, I haven't got time to sit and think about whether they're happy or whether life's working out for them. So, um, the last question. Not so much a question, but last thing, if you if you don't mind sharing, do you have any some tips for us, like um, things, small things that we can do every day, like things that we wake up and we just practice to maybe increase our quality of life, or just make us a happy person in general? Okay, well I'll share what I do, right. uh, and what I, what I've started to do even more intensely since I've been here. So I can always manage one minute before I get up, one minute to check in with myself. And I've started to ask my question. I used to do the three things I'm grateful for in the evening. And I've changed it now to, uh, or added in, three things that I could do today that are perfectly possible that would bring me a little bit of joy. Now, it could be really small, could be, I could make that really nice coffee instead of the instant coffee, or I could ring somebody, or I could go out at lunchtime. And I find that when I think of these three things, just thinking about them gives me pleasure. But the likelihood that I do them is increased a hundredfold because the question is, well, if I can do them and I've just appreciated the fact that they're going to make me feel better, make me feel happy, uh, I'm more likely to do them. So do we have to write it down or is no, it something? No, just think about them. Just think about them. And, you know, you deserve three little sure. nice things <laughs> every day. All right, well, thank you so much, Leslie, it's for, for your time, and um, I'm glad you enjoyed our program. I've enjoyed it so much. I'd recommend it to anybody. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.